Hey everyone, Pete Calandra here. On today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Spitfire Audio's Cinematic Frozen Strings. This library is part of their Originals series. This library takes articulations which have typically been found in some of Spitfire's more expensive libraries like Albion, Tundra, and brings them in at a reasonable price point. The soft and delicate articulations are performed by a very small ensemble of eight instruments. From what I've read, it's two first violins, two second violins, two cellos, and two basses. Some of the benefits of a small ensemble like this is the incredible detail with which you can almost hear every player separately within each articulation. One of the other benefits for me is that when you start doing divisi parts or playing chords with these ensemble patches, and the entire library is ensemble patches, you can still hear the detail and maintain the clarity of your lines, even if you're playing three or four note chords. This is something that's much more difficult to do when you've got a violin ensemble of, let's say, 24 players, because if you're playing a three note chord, that's 72 players. Having a small ensemble like this gives you a lot of options in terms of creating divisi parts. One of the other really cool features of this library is the miking setup. So you have three mic positions. You have the standard tree and close mic positions, but you also have super close. And with that super close, you're, it's like you're putting your ear right on top of the instrument and you're getting the kind of intimate detail which makes the instrument, even though it's being played very delicately and very quietly, sound larger than life. It's, it's really an interesting concept and I'm glad that they've got it there. To demo this library, I've written a short piece that uses every articulation in the library. We'll take a listen to that and then we'll break down instrument by instrument. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe and to be notified, ring that bell. Please leave any comments or questions below. Thanks so much for watching and let's get right into it. What I've got here in my Pro Tools session is four mixes of a little piece that I put together to demonstrate the library. The first mix uses just the super close mics, the second mix uses the close mic, the third mix uses the tree, and the fourth is a mix of the three microphones plus a little bit of the built-in reverb. So let's take a look at one of the mics setups from the mixed version. So you'll see I've got a little bit of close, a little bit more super close, some tree, and about 20% of their built-in reverb. So let's take a listen to this piece from that point, and then we'll do a breakdown using just the super close, and then I'll play around with the microphone positions as I do that. So let's take a look here at the long flautando consordino strings, and we'll take it from the middle of the piece, and we will just look at this section right here that has three note chords. There's four notes on the last one. 
So let's take a listen. Again, super close, no additional reverb, and I've got the release set right as it comes. Let's play around with adding a little bit more release and seeing if that changes the smoothness between the different chords. Yeah, I think it does. Let's talk a little bit about the music here, what I've done with some of these chords. Maybe some people find it helpful. These are three note chords and they're seventh chords, incomplete. I'm leaving out the fifth typically of the chord for the first four chords. And I'm just doing a pattern. So in other words, this first chord is a G major seventh. So we've got G, F sharp, and B. No D. So you see, you take the D out like that. In. It's got a different feel to it. If I make that in close position, you'll get sort of a cluster like that, right? So that's got a different feel to it. And just going down a third to an E minor seventh without the fifth, up a half step. I'm doing a two chord sequence and just transposing it down a step. And then to an E suspended chord and then moving that bottom note up gives us a major seventh, major seventh with a flat fifth right in this area here. Sharing those chord voicings with those of you that are starting out or younger composers, hopefully you can play around with those things and add that color to your own palette. Let's take a listen to this with the different microphones. So let's add the tree this time and from the same spot. feel like it's a little further away, a little less detail, and then the close. Very sensitive sound. Okay, long, super sultasto. At this point in the zeitgeist of all this stuff, we should all know what flautando is, what sultasto is, what sul ponticello is, what trato means. These are all terms that you should know if you're gonna be a composer, right? Flautando is a flute-like tone. Sultasto means that it's over the fingering board. Sul ponticello means it's by the bowing by the bridge. Trato means that it's like a long tone. So if you've got colenio, it's typically bouncing the back of the bow off the strings. Colenio trotto, you're bowing with the back of the bow, and violinists do not like that. It ruins their expensive bows. And I am wondering if Spitfire actually came to the session with a bunch of bows that they bought for the musicians. So let's solo out this close mic'd, super close mic'd, super soltasto. It'll be a little bit easier when we get to the short articulations to hear the differences, but you can't hear the difference. And then Colenio Trotto. This I used very sparingly, one note in here. That's what fit with the piece. So let's take a listen to this. You can really hear it's just a very dark sound. Let me play it in and play around with the dynamics. Should be a little bit easier to hear. Mm -hmm. 
you can literally hear the wood dragging over the string. Let's add some release to that and try it again. Change octaves. Change mic positions. Let's drench this with some of the built-in reverb and hear what that sounds like. Okay, so now we've got long sul tasto sul to sul ponticello. Again, I'm just using sustained notes with these sounds. They're not for playing long lines or fast passages. Really cool sound. Let's try playing this live and then I'll change some of the microphone positions and play it in different octaves. What's really great about that sound is how animated it is, right? It's giving you motion without you actually playing anything but a single note. Which is very human. Definitely a cool sound. Moving on, sul tasto flotando. Again, you're seeing that I'm only playing a couple of notes with some of these. Actually, before we go on, I know I've changed the mix, but it's still interesting. Let's take a listen to that beginning and we can hear how the three of those different articulations all blend together to create a really nice hybrid texture. What I like about doing this, you've got three different soft articulations and each one has its own timbre and it really brings out the different pitch registers of the parts I wrote. So the long flotando consordino is right in the mid range. It's a G I believe above middle C. And then the super soltasto right here, that's a higher up an octave. And then the sul ponticello is down two octaves maybe. And you can really hear the separation between the pitch registers of all three sections because of the different colors. Really cool technique. Here we go. Let's listen one more time. So now we've got a combination of sultasto and flautando, and I'm playing it in a very low pitch register here. It really adds a really haunting quality to the low note. Let's take a listen. The mics are off here. We just have the super close there. And I'm gonna turn the mic off 
my mic, that is, and play around with the sounds, you can see what I'm doing on the screen. Here we go. small section, right? So I can play those chords down there. And they sound articulate and not muddy. Really, really great for that. Let's do a little mix here. Mostly tree with some close and some super close. And let's bring up some of the fabulous reverb. Okay, here we go. Great sound. So long, no rosin. Let's take a look at this. Playing a big old G chord up there. Okay, let's take a listen. It's just so delicate and really beautiful. And because you're super close, you're, it's like your ear is right on the string. Okay, so I'm going to play stuff, change the mic positions, add the reverb, maybe add some release. I'm going to turn my microphone off now, and you'll see what I'm doing on the screen. It almost sounds like choir voices. It's so delicate. It's really beautiful. Let me add some reverb onto this and blend the microphones together.
Okay, a little two hand playing there down in the low register. Again, you can experiment around with that, but there are ways to voice chords down there where you can make sonorities that you couldn't normally make with a full bodied large string section because that would become too inarticulate and too muddy. And next we have our brushed spiccato notation here for you notation buffs. Again, nothing super amazing about this, just I think a lovely composition. And here, let's take a listen. Again, this is just super close. These microphones are not active. Okay, so right here, when we listen to this part, we can hear that the playing is a little bit loose and you can play around with that with the tightness. So I'm gonna turn my microphone off, play it, and then play around with the tightness as it's playing and you'll hear what I'm talking about. So you can have a little control over how tight and or loose the ensemble is. Let's play around with the different microphone positions and reverb. I'm going to turn my mic off and you'll see what I'm doing on the screen and I'll be playing some notes here. Yeah, with the short articulations, you can really hear the difference in the mic positions much more than with the longer articulations. Nice for playing moderate tempo things with a little bit of space in between the lines, not for playing super fast spiccato passages. Really useful sound. Okay, so next we've got the mando pluck, mandolin pluck, short mandolin pluck. Next we've got the short mandolin pluck. It's not a mandolin, but they're pl plucking it like you would pluck a mandolin. I, I think that's what it is anyway. Let's take it from over here where I've got a little bit more rhythm happening. Well, let's, let's actually play that sound. It's a really helpful sound. Let's play around with the mic positions. Again, the tightness works the same as the other library and I'll play stuff, play around with the mic positions and add some reverb.
all these sounds are very useful and as I've said earlier, if you don't have them, this is a really inexpensive way to get into this system. Next, we've got some Colenio strings. Everybody knows that's bouncing the back of the bow off the string. I'm going to loop this and then just play around with some of the controls and you'll be able to hear the change. Great, now I'm gonna play some stuff on the keyboard so you can hear the different registers, what they sound like. Here we go. And again, a small ensemble so we can play some nice thick chords and they won't get too muddy. Let's take a listen to that. Now let's go to our brushed Sultasto, our last one and this one I didn't find for this piece a lot of different ways that I could use it but I just a, a note that sort of crescendos in as it's velocity sensitive so let's take a listen to this and then I'll play around with the controls as it's looping Let me play a few things and you'll hear some different pitch registers for this. Here we go. All these sounds, different and very useful. Again, context, you have to find context like I've mentioned in other videos. Too many people just listen to a sound and they don't know what to do with it. What I'd like to do now, even though I've got a different mix set up, is play these four different short articulations together so that you can hear when they're playing together they create a unique timbre, the combination of all the different articulations. Here we go. Let's move ahead a little bit and we'll listen into this area here with just the short articulations. It 
it's really nice. You can play things, and again, you can hear because it's a combination of a small ensemble and different articulations. You can hear the voices much more clearly than if you were using the same articulation with a larger string ensemble. Very, very beneficial for certain kinds of music. This will be really, really handy. And one last thing I want to do before I play you out is take a look at what I've done here with the chords. Now, what I've done here is on the upper side here, I've got these drop two voicings. These are all seventh chords. So if we move this, 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 and this up an octave, you could see they're close position major seventh chords, right? So this is a G major seventh in third inversion. This is an A minor seventh in third inversion, B minor seventh. So let's move that back down. And then down here, what I've done is I've transposed everything down and I've put everything in close position in a different inversion with a different kind of motion. So in other words, these are all moving in parallel, but with this one, I'm going from first inversion to root inversion. So some notes are staying the same and other notes are moving down stepwise. Let's listen to what that combination of those two different ways of voicing the same chord in different pitch registers. Also notice that none of the notes overlap. That's a different kind of chord voicing. You know, this could be up, let's say this D was up here, and let's say this G was down here. You would, and maybe I'll play around with that and let you hear the difference with that. Yeah, I think I'll do that while we're here. Let's listen right now the way this is, and you'll hear the way this combination of articulation and voicing sounds. So that's really cool. Now, what I meant about interlocking is let's say I take this third, second note from the top on these, and I drop them down an octave, right? And then I take, let's say, the second note from the bottom. I'm just spitballing here, and I shoot those up an octave. You can see how the chords are now interlocked, right? This D fits right in the middle of these guys, and this G. Uh, and A, it's at times it's doubling and at times it's in between. So let's listen to this. One more time and then I'll switch it back. The way I've got it now, you can hear more of a distinction between the two sections. The other way where the they're overlapping and they're interlocked sounds much smoother. So just a little tip for those of you that are just starting out, playing around with your chord voicings. It's very easy to do in a DAW. Just select the notes and in Pro Tools, it's a shift and the down arrow. And for these, it's select all these notes here and it's shift and the up arrow. It took me 10 seconds to do that, and I can hear the different voicings. You know, you can get even more crazy. Let's say I take, mm -mm, these top notes here, and down one, two, three octaves. Got a completely different feel to it. Anyway, that's a little bit of theory. Can't help but be a teacher for a minute. Okay, to play us out, I'm just going to do the tree mix this time, and we're just going to do the MIDI editor. 
Let's take a uh, listen, and I'll be back on the other side to give you my final thoughts. All right, and that is the Spitfire Audio Cinematic Frozen Strings. For about $30 US, it's really a great addition to anybody's library. But in particular, those of you that might be just starting out, that might be on a budget, that might be students, and maybe you are using the BBC Discover library and are a little bit frustrated or want to get some alternative articulations into your palette, this is a great pickup. What I would say is for students and people on a budget that if you could afford this library and eventually add the originals intimate strings, you would greatly enhance the palette of the BBC Discover library in terms of articulations and sound possibilities. There'll be a link in the description box below for a zip file that has all four mixes of this piece so that you can listen to it on your own system. If you like this video, thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe. And to be notified, ring that bell. I've been Pete Calandra. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.